fire by night. And you know, Lee, this is usually the time that we would tell them who our guest is and what our topic is. You know what? We don't know. In fact, we wanted it to be a grand surprise. And so we've got some nominations. And let's get started. The nominees for this program's musical guest are Amy Grant's nephew's brother's cousin, Jimmy. Sandy Patty Cake. <laughs> Christian Leitner. New man, just out. And two hearts. All right, Lee, you got the envelope. Let's open yes, it up. I do. The winner it's is. Exciting. Who else? Two, two hearts. hearts. Yeah. Yeah. a long time for this. I want to thank all of our friends in holy places. And our company, Star Song, and our little dog that's in Nashville, Baby. He's our firstborn son. He's very hairy, and he's got four legs, and we call him Esau. <laughs> thank you very much. All right! <laughs> okay. Our next category, nominees for this program's title, God's Will is Really Neato. Next, next cue card. Next cue card, please. There you go. All right. Okay. Hearing God's voice is wacky fun. Okay. God's will, gotta have it. Yes, we do. And voices and choices. And the winner is. Voices and choices! Yeah! Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the author for Voices and Choices could not make it tonight, so on behalf of him, I'm going to accept this award. We thank you very much. Yeah. Mickey. And I'm Paul, man. Yeah, welcome to the Agape Shack, where we get high on the big guy in the sky. Far out, man. <laughs> you know something, Mick, man? I was thinking the other day, man, I just like to take Jesus, man, and just, and just wrap him up in a big joint, man, and smoke him, man. Hey, hey, Paul, that's pretty strong, man. Hey, well, man, Jesus is <laughs> strong, man. Yeah, he's like Mr. Clean. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, man, you know, you know, I, the other day or a couple minutes ago or something, man, I was smoking the Bible, man. You know, I was yeah. smoking smoking the Book of Romans, man, and my lungs, man, they got black, man. Black with the word, hey, man. Hey, speaking of black, black is beautiful. Right and here on, comes man. Jerome with our groove for Jerome. today. What's up, Jerome? <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, right. uh, hey, what's up, my brothers? What's up, my brothers? What's up, my brothers? <laughs> yeah. Hey, this week's groove is knowing God's flow. For your situation. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's awful important to know the plan the big man has for you. Yeah, yeah man, you know, it, it's kind of like a jackhammer, man. You got, yeah. you got noise, man. Just, just all around noise, man. Just noise. But, but you just got to hang on to the jackhammer, man. You just got to hang, hang on to so it, man. That is so deep, it's shallow. Cosmic. Yeah. Yeah, hey, my brothers, out. I believe we have our first individual here calling us at the Agape Shack. Hey, let's take our first caller. Hello? Hi, my name is Janet. Oh, hey, Janet, where are you calling from, man? West Bloomfield. I was just wondering, do you know which year we're in? Hey, baby, we're not on a time trip. What? Peace is everlasting. Mm, <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> Right on, Mick. You know, man, you, you, you can pull the, the man out of the 60s, but you can't take the 60s out of the man. Yeah, that's right. Next caller. Hey, this is Darren from Farmington Hills. Hey, Darren. What's up, my yeah. brother? 
Yeah, how can I know what God wants me to do with my life? <laughs> See, now you fooling with the funky beat, my brother. See, you are so trained to heavy, my brother. Oh, man. <laughs> tell about it, tell him about it, make you tell him about it. Tell him, God, mm -hmm. man, it's a freak out. Oh. Yeah. It, it's kind of like a toaster, man. It, it just kind of pops up when you need it, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, finding God's will is kind of like trying to find a comb in your throat. You know it's there. <laughs> you just gotta keep on, keep on searching. Yeah. Oh wow, well, man! You know, you know, it's, uh, God, man, he made he made lions and tigers and bears oh, my. And, and pink poodles, man, <laughs> and, and, and bumblebees and, yeah. and, and flip flops, man, and, yeah. and space time yeah. and, and yeah. supernovas and black holes. Oh man, and he made aardvarks too, man. Yeah. I God is big, man. Yeah. He's big, man. Big. It's a freak out. <laughs> yeah, baby. God's so big, but he like habitates inside of us. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey, you know something, man? Maybe we must be big too, man. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I think we're bigger than we think we are. Far out, man. Far out. Oh yeah. Excuse me, what about finding God's will in my life? Hey, good question. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. And you know what, my brother? <laughs> that deserves a cosmic get down answer. Yeah. Yeah, and dig this, man. We got the answer for you, man. Oh, yeah. Our latest yeah. music video, dude. Oh, that's get right. Down. Sorry, we're running out of time here on the Agape Shack, Darren, but we'll leave you with this the answer to your question, our latest song. Mm. For the path to take in the right time People like people to tell them what to do We like the word of God cause it shows us the truth Voices and choices, I'm looking for the truth Voices and choices, which path do I choose? Spirit, I've made my choice ooh, ooh, ooh. Voices from the doctor And voices at school Voices on the TV set And voices who want to rule Voices on the radio Voices on the phone But I like the voice of God Cause he never leaves me alone ooh, ooh, ooh. Wondering what to do What's the future hold And which path do you choose You can't find it in the car You can't find it in no crystal ball You'll only find it from God the Father Who created it all Voices and choices I found the truth Voices and choices my choice oh, oh. oh by his spirit
want to ask you a question, every one of you that are watching the program right now. What are you going to be doing five years from now? What are you going to be doing ten years from now? God has got a future for every single one of us. And you know, Lee, uh, as you look at your life today, I'm wondering, did you have any idea that you'd be sitting on this couch today? Did you have any inclinations as to your future growing up? No, Blaine, I didn't. You know what? It was hard, you know. I didn't know. I knew the will of God for my life, but I didn't know how I was going to do it, man. And I remember when I left Houston, Texas with $62 in my pocket with a raggedy car, man, you know, with a dream in my heart to do God's will. And I mean, this car was raggedy. I'll tell you how raggedy it was. It was, it was so raggedy, I could have left the keys in it running with the door open with a sign on it says steal me and nobody would have took it you know but i was i was excited man about getting here i got here and i began to pursue and i began to seek god's will said god what is it that you're, what's your perfect will for my life and god showed me you know but i had to work at it man it didn't come easy and it never was gonna it's never gonna come easy for anyone I think the thing to remember is this, the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And you may not know what is at the end of your life and the master plan of everything you're going to do, but you just continue like Lee did, just take the steps, the steps that you feel are next, you follow those and God will bless you. You know, I was reading the other day in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, and seven times it is recorded, him who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. In other words, God has got something to say to us who are in the the church. God wants to talk to you, and it's just like your radio in your car. You got to turn into the right frequency to get those voices to tune in. And God's ready to talk, God's ready to speak, but you got to tune yourself in spiritually so you can hear the right voices help you to make the right choices. We'll be back after this. Check this out. Joseph, Joseph, you shall rule and reign over your brothers and your mother and your father. You will be a great leader in the land. Brothers, brothers, I saw in my dream that you would bow to me. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> we shall not bow to you. No, no, we shall throw you no. into a pit, yeah, and you die. shall die. Die. Yeah. 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 I'm Carl. Yeah, and I'm Bud. Listen, we got a few lube jobs waiting, so we only got time for one flick this week. Our movie this week is Joseph's Dream. Joseph's Dream is basically about this kid with a big mouth who gets exactly what he deserves. I mean, hey, if my little brother was coming at me with all that you're gonna bow garbage, I'd hit him in the head with the rutabaga. Now, the acting was great. The plot stunk. Enough said, I give this movie a shutdown. Next week, we'll review... Hey! I thought the acting in this movie could have used a complete overhaul. But the plot, the plot was fantastic. I mean, you got this 17-year-old kid, right? He comes face to face with Potiphar's wife. Royal babe. Hey. Right there, right there at that point in the movie, we see the juxtapositional relevance of postprandial consequences, far surpassing any of his previous sidereal experience. Oh, yeah, Carl. Exactly what I would have said. <laughs> hey, just watch this. Joseph, come lie with me. Potiphar's wife, do not ask of me that thing which will sweep my soul at a famine for the length of my days. I must not, your royal babeness. For what shall I live if thou shan't prove thy love to me, Joseph? Joseph, Joseph. That is my name. Do not wear it out. Come. Hold me in your arms amidst the rage of torment and self-pity that would seek to crush us beneath its foul foot. I love you. I want you. I need you. Harper's wife, no! You ask of me to throw myself on your couch and throw away my dreams. And for what? A moment of fleeting pleasure. Is that what you think of me? I ask no man to throw away his dreams. 
Perhaps you could just gently set them down. Kiss me, you fool. Though there is a part of me that desires to taste of your waters, I shall flee your presence. I'll have to file a grievance with you on this one, bud. It's not the acting that makes this movie. It's the plot. It's a thing of beauty. Yeah, and you're a mama's boy. Am not. This movie takes you to the edge of an emotional cliff and leaves you hanging over its precipice until you're screaming for help. Uncle! Uncle! I give up! I mean, it's like having a hippo do a jig on your midsection. It, it destroys you. Somebody ought to dance a jig on your head, Carol. Where are you driving with this? This movie, it takes you to the brink of triumph and surrender, wondering, what's going to happen to Joseph? What's going to happen to his dream? I mean, I think this movie is going to inspire each and every one of us to get up and to chase after the dream that God has put in our palpitating hearts. I give this movie a tune-up. Okay, I gotta admit, he kinda tugged in my heart a little bit. Well, it ain't like I'm a pansy or nothing. It's just that he kinda reminded me of my dream. You? Yeah, that's right, Cairo, I have a dream. Ever since I was a little guy, I always wanted, I always wanted to drive a truck. A truck? Yeah, you know, one of them big rigs with 18 wheels and, and all the junk. I wanted to be the best Don truck driver to ever cross Illinois. Maybe even have one of them country music guys write a song about me. Hey, bud, that's great, ain't it? You know, if Joseph could follow his dream, that sends a message to me, Carl. You know what that message is, Carl? I'm going to tell you what that message is, Carl. The message is, I can do it, and you can do it, too. All right. I changed my position on this one. I give it a tune-up. Hey, that's two tune-ups for Joseph's dream. Next week, we'll be looking at Jason Goes to Compton. Ooh, good movie, huh? Yeah, kind of reminds me of the old neighborhood. Anyway, I'm Carl. And I'm Bud. Till next week, don't put no butter knives in the toaster. Why not? Yeah, if you're a handyman. Carrie Hodge has appeared on Merv Griffin, Jerry Lewis, even Johnny Carson. Tonight she makes her big time debut on Fire of a Night. Her and her husband Michael are two hearts. Great to have you guys on the program. Carrie, uh, you experienced stardom at a very young age in secular television, on with some of these names that I've just mentioned. What was that like for you as a child? And tell us a little bit of what happened in your life at that time. Well, it still felt kind of like this because my feet don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember when I was on Johnny Carson, my feet didn't touch, and I kept trying to feel the, for the floor, and my feet still don't touch, so, <laughs> so I'm going to put my foot up here. Uh, it was really, it was quite something. I started singing when I, when I was three years old, and professionally, I started singing when I was um, nine years old and opened for Rowan and Martin and George Burns and... and um, uh, followed a lot of elephant acts and stuff when I would open for Larachi and stuff, and that was about the best. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought it was normal for every girl, every little girl, to get up there and just sing around and dance on the stage. And in '86, I got a record deal with Motown, and that was very wonderful. And in '88, I dedicated my life to the Lord, and I met this good man in my life. Was there any uh, circumstances that came into your life that really made you? sense a need for a relationship with Jesus or was it just something someone shared with you and you accepted him? Well I had always prayed to God and asked him to be with me as I sang or things that I was struggling with but I never had a personal relationship um, that uh, 
I really experienced in uh, 88 when I asked him into my life, and it made a drastic change. I mean, so you didn't have, uh, like we read in some of the tabloids, all these childhood stars that go off into wild stuff and get all oh, messed up. No, you... luckily, I mean, thank God for that. I think yeah. he was always watching me. That's great. Now, Michael, you came into the picture, as she said, I guess in 88? 1988. <laughs> tell, us, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and a uh, little bit about how God's brought you together and what you're doing. Well, I, I became a Christian when I was in uh, junior high school, and I had a really... Really, it was a tough time for me because I remember uh, I would take drugs, you know, smoke pot and stuff, going to school, and I just felt horrible about myself. And um, I, I cut my pictures out of the the annuals. I've showed Carrie the annuals, and I'm like, where are you? He's <laughs> in the garbage. <laughs> yeah, long gone. <laughs> and uh, I was raised in the church, like Carrie was raised Lutheran. I was raised Catholic, and I thought I was a Christian. And uh, I met this family, and I noticed there was something different about them. And they really had the love of the Lord. It's the, they just loved each other, and uh, I wanted that. And, and uh, I, I came to just ask Jesus to be the Lord of my life. And for the first time, I really knew what it meant to be a Christian. You guys are seeing some great things added into your lives and your ministry, and it's really an honor to have you on Fire Tonight. You're going to come back in just a few minutes and be singing a, a song. What song is it? Holy Fire. It's our first single off of our album that will be released. And you're going to do it right here on uh -huh. Fire Tonight. On Excellent. Fire by night. Two hearts. Give them a big hand. <laughs> When I grow up, I'm going to be a fireman, or a policeman, or maybe a preacher, or an astronaut, or maybe a preacher on the moon. Yeah. yeah. I'm seriously considering. No, I'm definitely thinking I might go on a mission trip this summer. I mean, I almost went last year, but there's so much going on. You know how it is. Sometimes, Sometimes I wake, wake up, up in the up middle of the night and it's like I'm there. I hear a few voices outside whispering in another language. The wind sifting through the trees. I can smell the grass and the clay from my hut. And I'm there in another country, being a missionary. Someday. Someday. This year I'll turn 65. I'll have five grandchildren. Good pension. In an attic full of things my kids couldn't bear to throw away when they moved out. Maybe the missus and me will finally get to spend a little time on the mission field. Always wanted to do, do something, something like, like that. that. Sure would have been something. Imagine me a missionary. Always felt sort of a pulling in that direction. Could have been like the Apostle Paul. Traveling from village to village, bringing people good news, would have really been something. Here they are singing Holy Fire. Let's give it up for two hearts.
Sorry about having to tell the truth about your grades, Ron, but I'll keep trying. Where's your toupee, Mr. Grundy? It's over there in the trash with the path. Ron, I'm really worried about the children. You think God can help them? Ron? Ron, I can't see you. I'm over here, Andrea. Ron! Ow, I feel so gross. Don't fire this bill, Bill. I'm sorry. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He'll make straight your paths. It's tuna casserole. I think it's the answer. Rich, we got raisins too. Whenever it's cold, dark, and lonely, whenever my heart's breaking too, and I'm needing somebody to hold me, the love of my best friends comes through. The best times that I've ever had. You've got two love lines. 
lines, girl. You have two boyfriends? You have two boyfriends, and one of them's got dark hair, and the other one's got... Dark, dark, dark hair. Dark hair, that's right. Miss Cutter, you already knew all that about her. No, it's right here, really. You better start paying more attention to your schoolwork, or you're going to have one of those babies for real. Mm -mm. How many babies am I going to have? I'll see. Uh, two boys and a girl. Okay, how many babies am I going to have? You are going to have all the babies you want, you can afford to, because you're from a wealthy family, and you're, you're at a point of decision right now. Well, aren't you always at a point of decision in your life? Oh, yeah, but this is an important decision. It's going to shape your life. Miss Cutter, where's your baby? Oh, yeah. my baby's right here. No. <laughs> no. That's my baby's baby. This is my baby. I just feel so stupid carrying these around. I know. Can we get a babysitter? Yeah. No, you know the rules. Come on. you got to keep them with you to find out what it'd be like. You know, Diddy, your grade depends on if your baby lives. It's just till Monday. I'm doing it. Hobie? Hobie. Yeah, Hobie. Sir, my name's Richard. Richard Freeman. Oh, I'm sorry, Richard. Richard, I believe God's got a word for you, son. Really? Can I give it to you? Yeah, go ahead. Why not? Well, would you close your eyes? Oh, glory to God! Go ahead and feel his power, son. Feel his power. Oh. Thus saith the Lord thy God, through his humble servant. Oh. Thou shalt be changed, yea, in the twinkling of an eye. Thou shalt move from one state unto another. Yes. Across the borders I will lead you. I will pluck you up and remove you hither oh. from the state from which you are now in. Oh, and be not afraid, be not afraid, my son. For yea, even I, yes. even I yes. have been afraid at times. Thus saith the Lord thy God. Thank you, Lord. Hey. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? Pretty exciting, huh? Yeah, I, I didn't know God could be afraid. <laughs> I didn't either until I heard this guy say it. Come on, Rich. What do you think about all that? <laughs> Mike, I think I'm out of here, man. Oh, just because Brother B.W. Hicks gives you a word saying you're out of here, does that mean you're out of here? I mean, let me just ask you something. Have you ever thought about leaving before he gave you this little message? No, Mike. You see, that's why I need to hear this, man. It's a confirmation. Listen, if B.W. is so accurate, let me ask you this. When was the last time God was afraid? I don't know, Mike. Won't you tell me, huh? I'll tell you. God's never been afraid. What does the Bible say? God is love. First John says, perfect love has cast out all fear. Therefore, it is impossible for God to be afraid. <laughs> Mike, that's New Testament. Oh, that's, that's New Testament? What, what are you reading? The Koran? Look. Ron's letter of interest from state. Oh, man. <laughs> he is going to be excited. Open it. No. I want him to see it with us. Oh, come on. Tell him you accidentally opened it. Pat. I'm not going to do that, okay? Why? No. Hey, look, I'll go get Ron and tell him to come over. He's going to be so excited. You know, okay. me and that coach from that college, we kind of go yeah, back. Yeah, we know, yeah. Rich. You're all roommates, all that. Thank yeah. you. Go. Oh. Hurry. I can't believe that they're actually interested in a big-time university. Hey, I'll open it. I'll tell him I open it. No. I want him to be here, Pat. Why don't you go back to your little woman's PE department? Oh, I'm not dressed out. This is your heart line, and this is your knowledge line, and this is your life line. So, like, is this my telephone line? <laughs> no, this is true. It's only true because you want it to be. Only you can decide your future. So you still want to eat lunch together today? Hey, Ryan, let me read your palm. Yo? No. Ron, you are so much fun. I, I thought we were going to meet at the library. I mean, if, if you want to eat lunch with your friends, I mean, <laughs> just tell me. Look, I waited for you, okay? I'm happy. Are you happy? No, I'm cranky. I'm hungry. <laughs> I can tell. Let's, let's eat. So what's with the palm reading? Oh, it's nothing. It's Miss Cutter. She's showing us this stuff before lunch. Everybody wants to know their future. Well, don't you? Yes and no. Well, what are you going to do? Go to college? No, I'm going to drive a bus. I mean, and that's what I want to do. I either, either drive a bus or clean septic tanks. You know, something to get my hands dirty. What do you want to do? Get married, have kids. Well, maybe we could get married and I could work for your dad, huh? Maybe you could just work for my dad. 
What's up with you? You just made a joke out of marrying me. No, that's, that's not what I was saying. Oh, fine. So you don't want to marry me? That's, that's even funnier, Ron. No. I mean, I mean, yes. I, I mean, I wasn't joking. Well, look, if that was a serious proposal, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't even know if I want you in my future anymore. I don't know if I know you anymore. Andrea! Yeah, Coach? Ron Gaglione. I think you're gonna be pretty glad to see this. Oh, yeah. We waited until you got here to open it. Congratulations. <laughs> Guess they're not interested, man. What? Last time I talked to Butch, he said they were interested in you. It's okay, I should've known. Ron, there's always next year. Ron, just, just trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Coach, I, 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 don't, I don't understand this. I mean, I, I dreamt about all this last night. I, I dreamt about Andrea spilling the milk over her head, about the envelope, about that scripture. Oh, the supernatural just busting out now, huh? Ron, just, just sit down. Ron, why don't you tell us about your dream? Maybe, maybe your dream was from God. Oh, he can hear from God, and I can't, huh? Gordon? Matt, I just got it okay to get a raise for the entire P.E. department. Do you know what... That's me. I got a raise? <laughs> I was just going to try to get a raise for you, but I thought, no, I'll just, I'll just get a raise for Rich and Mike, too. <laughs> That's so nice, Gordon. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. As a matter of fact, this nice is a totally different feeling. <laughs> I've always wanted to be nice, <laughs> tried to be nice, but <laughs> just never been able to bring myself to do it. Wow, thank you, Gordon. <laughs> thank you so much. <sighs> do you know why State decided not to come and look at Ron Gaglione on that scholarship idea? Rich and Mike are going to appreciate me, appreciate me, and appreciate me. Gordon. I am going to wallow in their appreciation of me. You do know, don't you? Yes. And then, this basketball that I had in my hands, right? It, it, it like, turned into this armed grenade. It, and, then, and then, Coach, you come busting through the door with this, this tuna casserole, and you say, I think this is the answer. Is that all? Mike, that's enough. Oh, 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 and then there was, there was one more thing. You... You, you said something, it was, it was kind of unclear, it was something like rich in raisins, or, you know, but, but I'm not sure about that part. Okay. That's a, that's a wild dream. I, I, I don't understand it, and uh, it's probably, probably not from God, and, you know, it could be, but it probably isn't, so just, just kind of wait around and see. It could be from those chili dogs that you had, too. I mean, the, the one thing you can rely on, I think, here, Ron, is, is the scripture, you know? Just tr keep trusting in the Lord, and he'll... Direct your pants. Well, look here, I'm going to make a call to Butch and find out what's going on with this thing, okay? Hey, all's not lost, all right? Everything can still work out. I mean, there's always a... Uh... Uh, small college that might look at me. It's better no college, okay, Ron? Come on, you're late. Get to class, man. I can't change the kid's grades, Pat. I know that, Gordon, but you could tell him that he had promise. Oh, now, listen to me. When a university like State calls and asks if a kid like Ron Gaglione is going to be able to score high enough on his ACT test to help them play basketball, I'm going to have to tell him that given his past, given his present home life, I doubt it. Well, I know his mom is a mess. Sure she's a mess. Nobody knows where she is half the time. Well, who is going to help kids like Ron Gaglione, Gordon? Who's going to help them mold their future? I don't know, Pat. We're not God. We're not parents. We're just a school. Oh, by the way, could you drop this off, that barbershop on the way over here now? Yeah, you're right. Ron Dulce increases grades. 
Look here, have you guys found anybody to replace Smitty yet? Well, you know, I might be a little interested in the job. Well, I had an idea that you'd be asking me. <laughs> well, look, hey, let's not talk about it now. I'll be at the game tonight. We can talk afterwards, okay? I'll leave you by 4 o'clock, and, you know, I'll be there by time. Okay, talk, talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Rich, uh, I thought we were going to be talking about Ron's scholarship opportunities, uh, not your latest dial of prophecy. Look, man, this is serious to me, Mike, man. You know, I'm just checking out my options. As far as I'm concerned, you've really got one option, Rich. What's that? That is to pray and ask God what his will is for your life, not be listening to some guy who thinks he's a prophet. Look, man, B.W. loves God, too. Well, I love God, but I've made mistakes, you know? You can love God and be sincerely wrong. Well, look, I'll try a fleece, okay? If the team wins tonight, then God wants me to go. If they lose, then God wants me to stay. What if they tie? <sighs> then maybe God's not sure. <laughs> God is sure. Have you ever read John chapter 10? Yeah, sometime I read it. Okay. It says there that God's our shepherd. We're his sheep. We can hear his voice and the voice of a stranger we should not follow. There's no one stranger than B.W. Look, Mike, all I'm saying, all this is just it's confusing to me, man. Well, if you're confused, you need to stay put and not do anything. For what it's worth as a friend, it doesn't feel right in here, Rich. Well, Mike, maybe you need to pray about going with me, man. Okay, I'll do that. Let's pray. Rich, I'm hearing something. No, don't go. See, there you go again. Cut it out, man. Don't do that. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. God will show you. Ron. Hi. Hi. Look, I'm... I'm really sorry about blowing up at you. I, I can't believe... Sometimes uh, people have disagreements, and uh, yeah. you just just got to talk it through. I mean, why can't you just tell me how you feel? It's, it's just... Look, if, if, if you're going to say that you just want to be friends, um, <laughs> I'll just say that. Ron, it's... Look, it's my parents. They, they're, they think we see too much of each other. They, they we're seeing each other too much. And, uh, and they don't like me, and um, they don't want me to see anyone. No, no, Ron, it's not that. They don't know you, okay? They just, they just don't want me to get too serious or something. Let's get you home before they get madder at me. I'm sorry, I, I gotta ride the bus, okay? Um. Bus? It's my mom. It's here. I gotta go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bye. I'll call you later. No, um, I'll call you, okay? Hey, Ron. How's it going, man? All right, Coach. How about you? You're doing great. Everything okay? Yeah. Great, great. All right, see you tomorrow. Yeah, see ya. Hi. 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 Hi, what? Hi, got something on your mind? Laura, sit down. Ron Gaglioni. What do you think of? Hmm. Dark hair, Italian nose, needs a home. Exactly. Ron Gaglioni is going to live in this house. Is going to live in this house? Yes. Ron Gaglioni should be living in this home. Ron Gaglioni should be living in this home? <laughs> See, you're in agreement. This is God. I've been praying about this. I know it's right. I've tried to ignore it, but it's right, honey. Oh, it might be right, but there's three problems. Okay, well, we can deal with them. What are they? Let's talk them out. Number one, his mom. Okay, she, she's a problem. Two, how's he going to fit in our car? Oh, come on, huh? We can get him in the car. Three, Grundy. Oh, Grundy. Why can't he be nice just for once? We're going to pray. That's all there is to it. We're going to pray, and we're going to see this thing happen, okay? okay. Give me your hand, hon.
Father, we just thank you for Ron. We thank you, Lord, that you love him and that you care about him. Lord, you've promised to never leave him or forsake him. And we ask you, God, that you would use us to be your hand of love that reaches out to him. God, that you'd make a way in all of these circumstances to have him come and to be a part of this family. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you're going to reach out to him and that you're going to change his life and let him know that you really do care in Jesus' name. Amen. Mom? Mom? Ron right now and ask him over for dinner tonight. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, we can wait another day. He's probably already got dinner plans. We'll just get with him tomorrow. Hi, uh, is, is Andrea there? Well, I, I think she just tried to call me. Yeah, okay. Bye. <sighs> okay, Lord, now I'm gonna ask you for myself to show me your will. Show me, Lord, that perfect thing that you want me to do in life. Okay? I don't feel any difference. Sure hope nobody saw me talking to myself. I'm still alive in case you haven't noticed. Hey, hon, what's for dinner? Tuna casserole. Tuna casserole? Yeah, tuna casserole. Hon, we never have tuna casserole. I'm sorry. Do you know what this means? Ron told me he had this dream, okay? He had this hand grenade in his hand, and right after that, I came up to him. I gave him some tuna casserole. Ron, 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 answer the phone. Nothing. Nothing? What's, what's all this stuff in your car? I'm leaving, Coach. My mom took off already. Well, it doesn't look like you got enough money to go too far, Ron. Now, don't I owe you $5 or something? What? You know the basketball game we played the other day. <laughs> Coach, we were just kidding. It's How about right. this? Double or nothing. Come on. You can't leave town without playing me one more game of basketball. Now, grab your ball, meet me at the basketball court, and we'll play another game. Let's slow down and talk about this thing, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll follow you. Cool, all right. Let me get some gas. We'll go. Hello? Ron? Is anyone home? Ron? So your mom left, huh? Yep. So what you gonna do? I don't know. Got a couple of relatives up north I might be able to move in with. You know what, Ron? Maybe I'll think about this thing, man. Not move too fast. It's good advice, Rich. Maybe Rich ought to think about that. Well, maybe Rich has thought about it. Maybe Rich is not going now. Ron. 
Go out there for three. Why don't you move in with Laura and I for a while, Ron? Really? Are you sure, Coach? Hey, no problem, man. You never guess what uh, <laughs> what she's cooking for dinner tonight. What? Doing a casserole, bud. Coach, that was in a dream. <laughs> That's right. It's the answer. It is the answer, man. Rich, what? We got raises. Raises. Oh, yes. Boy, I've been looking for that, man. Coach, God. that was in the dream too. It's, it's not. It's not rich. We've got raisins. It was rich. We got raisins. And you thought I was crazy. It's like two scoops of raisins, I guess. <laughs> rich and I. You know, I once heard a preacher say that God has got a wonderful plan for your life, not a wonderful life for your plan. And it's a little bit of a cliche, but it is so true. And I think this is best illustra illustrated to me in a scripture passage that is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, where we find the story of the rich young ruler. In verse 16, we pick it up and find that this rich young ruler came to Jesus and he said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? So here's this guy, and he's saying, I want to go to heaven. I want to have eternal life. What do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus answers him and says, he says, Keep the commandments. He says, Walk in the word of God. Keep the commandments and there were ten commandments and the rich young ruler turned around to Jesus in verse number 18 and said which ones like he wasn't supposed to keep them all he said which ones am I supposed to keep and then Jesus proceeded to give him commandments and I began to read them he said you shall not commit murder this is one commandment you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness honor your father and mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself these are all good things don't kill your neighbor don't commit adultery don't steal these are things that will keep you in good stead in the community. Amen? And so we, we see these commandments, but the, the young man turned to Jesus and he said, listen, I've kept all of these. I've done every one of these. What am I still missing? What am I still lacking? And as I looked through these commandments, I thought to myself, these were not all the commandments of Jesus uh, that we find in the Word of God. In fact, he left out in my mind some of the most important ones. He didn't talk about having no other gods before you. He didn't talk about keeping the Sabbath holy. He, he left out not taking the Lord's name in vain. He left out every commandment that pertained to this rich young ruler's relationship with God and gave him commandments that pertained to relationships with fellow men. Now, I want to ask you this. Did Jesus forget the commandments? Did he, did he leave them out? Did he get home that night around the campfire with his disciples and say, Oh, man, I forgot half the commandments. Peter, why didn't you tell me? No, he didn't. I believe he left them out on purpose. Because this rich guy turned to Jesus and said, listen, I've kept all those commandments, but I'm missing something. In other words, I'm not fulfilled. I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy. What am I missing? I'm doing all these good things. I'm not cheating and stealing and murdering and hurting people. I want you to know that this guy right here, he, he could have been a deacon in a lot of churches in America. He might have been a youth pastor in a lot of churches in this country. He had his act together. He was living a holy life. And yet on the inside, he was missing something. And he said, Jesus, what am I missing? And Jesus turned to him and said, go and sell everything you have. Give it to the poor and you shall find treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. And the young man walked away sorrowful for he had great possessions. And he wouldn't do what Jesus asked. You know what the guy's problem was? He was a good guy. He did good works. But he wasn't willing to put aside his ambitions to obey God in his life and to follow the will of Jesus Christ for his life. He missed out on an incredible plan. Who knows that this guy might have been one of the greatest apostles to ever live if he would have only followed Jesus. He might have written much of the New Testament, but he never found out because he didn't follow God. You know, there's a lot of Christians in churches across this country that they're being good, just like the rich young ruler. They're giving in the offering. They're going to the youth group. They're being involved in church. They're being a nice person. They walk old ladies across the street, do everything, and yet on the inside, they're just like this rich young ruler. Something is missing. Something's wrong. And the problem is they're not obeying God. They're not listening to God's voice and not being directed by the Holy Spirit. 
And it's so easy to hear from God. God's our Father. He loves us. We're sons and His daughters if we know Him. And the Bible says that as we study His Word, Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, it says as we are transformed by the renewing of our mind with the Word of God, it says that we're able to prove the acceptable, perfect will of God. So we can know God's will by His Word. You know, if, if you are praying one day and you hear this voice that says, Go rob 7-Eleven and I'll bless you with $1,000. How many know that's not God? Even though you thought that might have been God's voice, God's voice will always line up with His Word. And you can always judge whatever you feel you're to do by the Word of God. Does it uh, uh, accurately line up with the Lord and with His Word? And then secondly, we can know God's uh, voice by prayer. We can hear what God wants to say in our life by just listening to Him. Prayer is two ways. It's not just one way, us talking. It's us talking, worshiping God, praising God, and then listening. What is God speaking to us? And then letting that, letting that still, small voice direct us. Those impressions that we get, those urgings, those leadings. You might not hear the audible voice. I never have. But I know that God directs me and He leads me step by step. We can all hear God's voice. And I want you to know as I close out this message that there's many of you that are making the biggest decisions in your life right now. Your marriage, your career, what you're going to do when you get out of school, what you're going to do next week, who you're going to have relationships with right now. Big decisions. The biggest decisions of your life. You need to know that God is directing you. I want to pray for you right now that you'll be able to hear God's voice and that you'll make a decision to say, Yes, Jesus, I want to know that you're leading my life and that I'm not leading it all by myself. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every person watching this program, ask you, Lord, that they would have a yielded heart, that they would not be like the rich young ruler who walked away from God's plan, but that, Father, they would yield themselves and say yes to Jesus and to his will and to his plan. And we give you praise and glory for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, we've come to the end of another exciting Fire by Night program. And let's give it up for our special guest, Two Hearts. Come on, yeah. come on. Yeah. And speaking of hearts, we don't want you to miss the next pro program. We're going to be talking about broken home, broken heart, discussing the impact of divorce upon the American teenager. But right now, James Farmer, Joey, and the Fire by Night band, come on, finish it. Woo! Come on, y'all, get your hands together. It's just like fire Shut up in my bones It's just like fire Shut up in my bones It's just like fire Shut up in my bones It's just like fire Shut up in my bones Well, went down to the water But the water was so cold It chilled my body long But it did not chill my soul It's just like Shut up in my box.